But um, since I was in banking originally, and this goes back to uh, the late 60s, early 70s, a, uh, a fellow named Steve Price has been with the uh, Small Business Administration. And, um, but he's not as old as I am. And um, he's, a, he's a very, uh, very good man. And he's brought uh, Travis? Bartley and Ariel to uh, talk about some of the features of small business. One of the things that um, uh, struck me is that um, there's a lot of uh, international trade going on out of Utah. And um, the, uh, the SBA has a, uh, has a way of making things easier and greasing the skids for entrepreneurs and what I mean by greasing the skids is making it a little easier through a guarantee program so if you're interested in um, in uh, in starting your own business at some point or if you're working in management in a business at some point when you finish uh, you want to keep in mind that the Small Business Administration is here to help the businessman and um, I've, um, I've enjoyed my relationship with the SBA for a long time. And uh, I uh, headed the SBA department at Zions Bank for a while and uh, worked for a Bank of the West, among others, and some of the small community banks and um, helped them in their programs. And um, the uh, regional office here in Salt Lake is... Um, in my opinion, the best one in the, uh, in the country. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Steve. Do you want to? Bartley inherit. Bartley, Bartley inherit. OK. It's a rite of passage. Bartley's going to, uh, to introduce everybody. So let's give Bartley a big hand. And Ariel, OK. Thank you, Richard. We are, we are excited to be here today and share with you a little bit about what we do at the Governor's Office of Economic Development. And so that's the website that you're seeing right there. Ariel and I are part of the international team at GOED, Governor's Office of Economic Development. And what we want to do is promote exporting from the state of Utah and get businesses selling their products around the world. And I'm curious, how many of you, well, the, I guess the question would be, how many dollars in exports do you think Utah had last year? Any guesses out there? How many dollars in exports? We're a landlocked state, right? Nearest seaport's about 700 miles away. Uh, how many exports did we have? Any guesses? Anyone? Come on, just throw a number out there. Let's hear something. Oh, you're bashful. It's the first day. 10 million, okay? Let's take another number, it's higher. A billion, we got a billion, let's go, it's a little higher. Anybody else wanna take a shot? 12 billion, we're getting warmer but it's higher. <laughs> we're not at a trillion. You're real close, 19.1 billion. 19.1 billion, that's a lot of dollars in exports out of a little state of like Utah, right? We've got a population of just under 3 million people. But it's very impressive. And what's happening, why that happens is because businesses are thinking globally. How many of you want to start a business one day? So at least half of you, three quarters of you it looks like, want to start a business one day. How many of you who want to start a business have ever thought about exporting your product or your service outside of the United States. Has that ever crossed your mind? One, two, three, yeah, just a handful. Well, today our goal is to help you keep that in the back of your mind always. Because uh, what's the statistic, Ariel? How much of the world's population, 90% the of the world's purchasing power is outside of the United States. So if you develop a great product, you need to be selling it outside of the United States as well if you can because the market, that's where 90% of the market is, is outside of the U.S. And there's great opportunities to make that happen. 
and we do that. We, we try to help facilitate small businesses get their feet on the ground for going international. And international is difficult. There's some challenges to it, but it's not impossible. And the thing about it, if you do international, you become a better business because you have to learn how to make your business that much better so you can be effective in a global market. And you'll be even more successful at home if you can pull it off. So one of the things that Ariel and I do is we administer a federal grant that comes through the U.S. Small Business Administration. And it's called State Trade and Export Promotion. And so this is our website for our international division at the Governor's Office of Economic Development. For those of you who might watch this later the, and can't see this, the address is business.utah.gov forward slash international. So business.utah.gov will get you to GoEd's primary site. And then this is the international portion of that site. And at International, we promote trade missions where we uh, take different businesses, a delegation of businesses uh, who are interested in going to a foreign country, and we try to help them enter that market. Uh, this year, we're, we'll be going to Mexico in April. Uh, Governor Herbert will lead that trade mission and hopefully open some doors for some of our Utah businesses here to start doing business there. Later, we'll go to Canada. Uh, they haven't picked the exact dates, but probably in May or June. And then in the fall, they're contemplating going to Brazil and China. And those will be the trade missions for this year. We also help businesses get to trade shows that may be uh, important for their business to be able to enter a market. For instance, we just helped a company, a small business, uh, in Salt Lake called DPS Skis. They make carbon fiber skis and uh, they went to Moscow, Russia just a few months ago to a big snowboard and ski trade show. And that's going to help them get their product out there so that people can see it and they'll start doing deals and start making sales. And so we try to help businesses get to those places as well. And we do all this in collaboration with the Small Business Administration through the State Trade and Export Promotion Program, or STEP program. We got a little flyer we'll pass out to you. But Ariel, she's the program coordinator for the STEP program, and I'm going to turn some time over to Ariel now to tell you about the STEP program, uh, what it does, how it helps businesses, and some of the successes we've seen out of it. We'll get it right this time, we'll say good afternoon. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as Bartley said, I'm the program coordinator over the STEP grant, and my role is to kind of evaluate export plans and business plans um, for these companies that want the grant. Uh, it's not a big grant, but the grant usually covers the travel costs and sometimes some of the booth fees for a trade show or trade mission. And so this is a big uh, carrot for companies that are first-time exporters or it's the first time going to a market because it's a big, you know, it's kind of an expensive risk to go out there. But it's a worthwhile risk because, as Bartley said, it's 90% of the market is out there. And sometimes, for some companies, all your market's out there. Uh, we've seen a lot of companies coming to our door that are saying, hey, I'm not selling in the U.S., but I'm selling everywhere but the U.S. So that's a, you know, an important thing to remember, that your market may not be here at all, depending on what type of niche or what type of product you have. Um, so the things that I can tell you about the grant itself is that... Um, it covers, you know, obviously travel expenses, booth fees, hotel. So if you're working with a company now or you have a company that is going to be up and running in the next two years, this is the grant for you. Um, also, the things that we look at when we look at your plan is do you have something in mind specifically? And this is really important that you set up your plans in advance because a lot of times you see companies are like, we think we want to be in Brazil but they're not sure why. They haven't done a market plan. And we work with the World Trade Center, and they're our partners. I don't think they're on our partner page. But the great thing about the World Trade Center is they have some really great experts that can pull out some market research, tell you how much it will cost you to get your product to market in that country. They can evaluate different markets for you and determine what's your top market. What are your top five markets? 
What are going to be your biggest barriers? And so this is really the goal of the step grant. And that's what I look at when I look at companies. And if you have more specific questions about the grant, we can answer that. But I think we don't want to take up too much time for Steve. Uh, but also, you know, and I think Bartley's going to talk about this pretty soon, the difference between a trade mission and trade show and the value between the two. Okay. Uh, well, Bartley's actually been on both. <laughs> Um, but what I can tell you is if your company or your product, when you're looking at it, you're deciding which one should I go to, a trade mission or a trade show, ask yourself how much government involvement is there going to be in your product. So the way that you'll know that is your product going to require some sort of certification for, from an agency similar to our FDA? Is it a medical product? Is it an ammunition? Those are things you should think about. If you're going to have a lot of government involvement and they're going to have some barriers, you want to go on a trade mission. The reason for that is trade missions, we typically have a lot of government back and forth between our side and their side. And we can help these companies with these issues meet the right people. And by having the state of Utah seal on it, it makes it an official trip. It gives them a little bit more trust in what you're doing. Whereas a trade show is an awesome opportunity that I'm going to let Bartley talk about, but it's going to get your product out there to a large quantity of people at once. So it's a great marketing opportunity, and I'll let him talk about that. Great. Thanks, Ariel. Um, these, are, these are great programs, and what they're here for, again, is to help your small business. Uh, small businesses, they need every resource they can get. And what this grant is that Ariel's talking about is, is that boost that sometimes makes all the difference, right, to help you get somewhere where you can get out there internationally and start promoting your product. So Ariel's been referring to some of my experience personally. So I moonlight <laughs> with a, a small business that I just started last summer. And I've done that because of all that I've learned working in the Governor's Office of Economic Development and working with Steve Price and others and being able to take advantage of opportunities that are available to all of us um, here in the state of Utah and we just need to know about them and access them. And so this is the small company that I started uh, this summer. It's called uh, Vital Spark. And I chose that name, I just liked it because our primary pro purpose was to try and provide housing, um, uh, steel framing for housing in South America. And I figured, you know, it's an, uh, that kind of has a new beginning type of sound to it, and we want this to be a new beginning for people. Give him a nice house. So anyway, um, what we do, we have a system where we prefabricate metal framing. Everything is cut to size, and, and all the holes are pre-drilled, and everything's dimpled and stuff. And it comes down there in a kit. Basically, all they have to do is assemble it like an erector set. And then they can build this house in, in no time. And... We've done other larger structures as well with the people that I'm partnering with. So you're seeing a lot of their pictures, but that's essentially what we have right there, that little shed. So what I did is I identified the Peruvian market. Now, how did I do that? Well, <laughs> I knew somebody who was from Peru, <laughs> and they were living here. And then Peru had experienced that really large earthquake about, what's it been, about seven, eight years ago now. Um, I think it was, what, a nine-point-something earthquake. And they build so much of their housing out of concrete and blocks. So when an earthquake like that comes along, it just knocks it right down. And I thought, well, still framing is a perfect alternative, right? If they build out of that, they can build a very strong home that's not going to fall on them. And it's affordable. And we can send this down prefabricated so it's simple for them. They just assemble it like an erector set, put those screws in, away they go and finish the house with local materials. So anyway, uh, I knew someone from Peru, and that helped me uh, identify that that was the market I wanted to go to. Now, Ariel mentioned, you may not be sure what market is good for you or where you ought to go to. And that's why it's really good to use the World Trade Center and to contact them. And you can contact us, and we can put you in, in touch with them as well, because they can run an analysis of your product and help you identify that the best market throughout the world for your product and where you ought to be selling it. And that's another way you can find out. Or you might have, like I said, a connection like I had 
where you're like, hey, this guy's going to help me in Peru. I got to take advantage of this opportunity. So anyway, I needed to find some people to buy my product, though. And one of the best ways that I could do that for me initially was to go on a trade mission. And so the state of Utah hosted a trade mission last summer to Peru. And uh, I took advantage of that opportunity and went down there uh, with my own personal company. And by doing that, uh, the state of Utah helped us coordinate a meeting with the housing ministry. And that was ended up being the best thing that could have happened on that trip for me. The reason why is I knew that nobody would buy my product without seeing it. I mean, you can identify with that. You don't want to buy something unless you can see it and know what it is, right? So I needed to get a prototype down there, something that they could see. And the other problem I had was, well, where do I build this prototype? Who am I going to, how am I going to get people there to see it? Who do I invite? Well, anyway, I went to this meeting with the housing ministry and they, li they said, wow, we like your product. And this was in August. And they said, Bartley, we, uh, we're, we're hosting a trade show in October. We want you to come down to your, this trade show and we want you to bring a prototype of your product and build it. And uh, I knew that was a short amount of time, two months, but it wasn't impossible. I said, you bet, we'll be here. And so I came home and we fabricated a 42 square meter little house, which is a little over 500 square feet, a little two bedroom home. And we sent it down to uh, Peru. Uh, and so we had one week to f manufacture that and get it on a boat and on its way. And we flew down there in October and we, we did everything we could and got it out of customs finally, out of the port, got it to the fair site, and we built this little prototype uh, in two days and had it ready for the trade show. And we had about 2,000, it was a smaller trade show. We had 2,000 people a day come through, though. It was perfect for us. It gave us the exposure that we needed. And, and out of that trade show, I now have clients. I've got people who came and they saw the product and they said, we want this. And so I've got uh, about four developers right now with serious projects that we're working on, uh, you know, to provide them with housing units so they can go develop communities, master plan communities, and we'll start selling these products down to Peru. And what's happened out of that is I have learned, uh, I mean, it's been a great learning experience for us, and we're refining the business and it's going to make us all the more successful here at home. And uh, it can be done. I th I th that's the message I want to leave you with today, is it can be done. So you can go on a trade mission, and it's going to help you break through some of those barriers. If you need to contact with the government and you need to hit some receptions where they'll have political people there and so forth, and that can help you break through. And then you go to that trade show, and at the trade show you can market your product to potential buyers. And that's what's really going to launch you and, g and get your sales going. And it can happen. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> so I remember, I, I remember when I was in school up at the U, and I needed to get a job. And I found this job driving school bus for Salt Lake School District, split shifts. And so I could go and I could do it. And people are like, wow, you want to drive a bus? Are you sure you can drive a bus and stuff? And I said, well, I've looked at other people driving buses. If they can drive that bus, I can do it. So you're looking at me today. If I can take this down to Peru and I can start this, you can do it too with your own product. And whatever comes to your mind, you can do it and you can make it happen. Don't ever forget to think globally as you think about being an entrepreneur and setting up your business. With that, I'll turn some time over to Steve now. And then uh, I guess we'll, we'll still be here to answer any questions you might have for us when Steve finishes. Okay. Thanks. Now, how good does it get when you come in your first class of the semester tells you how to get a free trip to China <laughs> on the government's nickel? Doesn't get any better than that, right? Well, we're going to give you lots of secrets today because uh, the SBA is probably the best kept secret of the, of the federal government. But let's get back to some real basic stuff, first of all. Uh, is small business important to the U.S. economy? Why? What do they do that's so special? They provide jobs for other people and help uh, our Chinese and Okay. 
In fact, let me ask you, who creates more jobs in the United States, large business or small business? Small business creates more business than large business. Now, a lot of people don't realize that, okay? So most of the jobs in the country are from small businesses. And of course, you hear in the news all the time how important creating jobs are and uh, in, in the local news. In fact, uh, the state always likes to recruit some large businesses and bring them into the state. If they get a Procter & Gamble like they did up in Box Elder County, that's big news. They come in, we're gonna bring a thousand new jobs to the area, you know, big news. But the, the real fact of the matter is, small businesses who's, is who creates most of the jobs in the country, okay? Uh, let me ask you this then. So it, small businesses are important to the economy. Is it easy for a small business person to, to borrow money to start a business? Why not? What percentage of businesses that start up are around after five years? Okay, 10%, 15%. But by far the majority of businesses that start up of these small businesses are not gonna be around in five years. So if you're a bank with a lot of money and you wanna loan it out to somebody who's gonna pay it back with interest, do you wanna make loans to small businesses? Uh-uh, you don't. It's just a fact of the matter. But yet we just said small business is real important to the economy. They're gonna create the jobs and pay the taxes. So we have to figure out a way, how do we help small businesses get access to money so they can start their small businesses? And, and by the way, guess what the number one question we get asked at the SBA is? Uh, when, when we ask small businesses what do they need help with, what do you think the, the number one thing they ask for is? I need money, startup money, I need working capital, I need to buy some equipment, I need to go on a trade show, whatever it might be, uh, they want money, okay? Uh, so I don't know if any of you are bankers or no bankers, uh, what does a banker need in order to lend you money? Okay, business plan I heard, I heard collateral. Why do you need collateral? You got a business plan that says you're gonna make a lot of money. In case the business plan fails, you've got a backup plan with the, uh, the collateral, right? Uh, do small businesses have lots of collateral? No, oh, we're in another problem. <laughs> they don't have lots of collateral, otherwise they could sell it or borrow against it and get the money they needed to start their businesses, right? Uh, so that's a problem. So where does SBA fit in, into this work? Well, we had to figure out a way to help small businesses get access to money that they need to start and grow their businesses without competing with the private sector and without, cast, without costing you know, the taxpayers tons of money and fill this gap that the private sector isn't willing to fill because it's important to the economy for the small businesses to do this. So we do this in the form of, when Rick mentioned to it, in the form of loan guarantees. The SBA offers loan guarantees to private lenders, somewhere between 50 and 90%, depending on which program they use, uh, if they'll make loans to small businesses. Wow, that's pretty cool. Just think of your government is co-signing on your small business loans to help you get money to start and grow your businesses. That's a pretty good deal, don't you think? I mean, it's hard enough to get your dad or your mom to co-sign on something, let alone the federal government. But if the federal government will guarantee this deal, you're gonna get access to money that you otherwise couldn't get access to. Because you don't have the collateral, typically. Uh, most of them are startup situations, okay? I mean, you have a business plan, but have you ever seen a business plan that doesn't cash flow? Everybody's business plan initially always shows they're gonna make money, right? You never see, nobody has a business plan that shows they're gonna fail. Every business plan they put together says, yeah, I'm gonna make oodles of money and here's how long it's gonna take me and here's what I need to do it. But we all know that's not the case, okay? So by SBA offering this guarantee, you can get access to this money otherwise because we're co-signing on that deal for you. Uh, anybody care to venture since Vardy was throwing out uh, guesses for how much trade the state did in international trade? How much money do you think the SBA guaranteed in loans last year in the state of Utah? 25 million? Oh, well no, 25 billion is, is too high. We're not quite up that way. We're, we're in the millions, but we're not in the billions, okay? 
Uh, in Utah last year, the, the, the SBA guaranteed about $408 million in loans to small businesses in the state of Utah. And by definition, they couldn't get this money on a conventional basis. So that's $408 million that wouldn't be out on the streets, that wouldn't be in the hands of small businesses unless the federal government would guarantee the, the repayment of up to 85% of those deals. Okay? So as you all as budding entrepreneurs or wanting to start your businesses, you're, gonna, uh, you're probably going to do a business plan. You're going to find out you need some money. And unless you have a nice nest egg or a rich uncle or something, chances are you're not going to have that money and you're going to have to try to borrow it. And when you do, you probably want to go see your lender about an SBA guaranteed loan to get that money. We can make loans as small as $1. <laughs> we can make them as high as $5 million and provide that guarantee. Okay. Uh, other things you need to be aware of our program is that we're not collateral-based lenders. We're not looking at the collateral as, as the primary issue. But since we're using taxpayers' dollars to give these guarantees, we have to have a fiduciary responsibility with the lenders, and we have to take collateral. In fact, we'll take all of the collateral that you have available. Uh, it's generally not enough to, to cover the loan, but uh, lack of collateral is not a reason for a decline on an SBA loan. Okay. So we go back then to the business plan. So this business plan becomes very important. We've got to have a good, well-thought-out, research business plan. So how do you get one of those? How do you get a business plan? Get the what? Get the SBA to help one. Get the SBA to help one? Well, any other sources? Okay. Yeah, so you can just prepare your own. You have your strategy. You're going to put this down on paper, what your thoughts are, what your vision of the business is. Okay, talking to a similar business in a, in a similar industry. There is a volunteer program that will help you with that. You can go to college. You can go to Solid Community College and take entrepreneurship classes. I'm sure there's somewhere along the line that there's a class on how to write a business plan. You know, and you can go to college for four years and get a degree, and then maybe at some point you can, you can do that. Or you can just have at it, start writing it. You can talk to somebody. Well, the SBA knows the business plan is very important, so we have a programs to help you in that area. Okay? We actually have three main resource partners that we'll refer you to. And by the way, all the stuff I'm talking about today is in these resource guides, and I'll leave these up here for you to pick up after class. These will become your Bibles on starting uh, businesses and using SBA programs. But we have three main resource partners that we deal with that you can access for free. Uh, one is a volunteer group that's called SCORE. Uh, they, these are men and women who have uh, business expertise. There we have about a, sure, uh, that, that we have about 100 uh, volunteers in the state and they offer their business consulting for free. They will sit down with you face to face. You, uh, you can go online and the whole idea is that you can ask them any question you want on how should I start and grow my business, okay? So they're available to help you, and they can be a mentor throughout as long as you want to use them, okay? So how cool it is if you can find somebody who's already been there, done that, that can tell you how the shortcuts to take and the things that are important, not important, to help your business be successful. That's one of the programs we have, SCORE. We also have what's called the Utah Small Business Development Network. Uh, the Utah SBDC, for short. Is a, is a collaboration in the state, and it's between the Governor's Office of Economic Development, the SBA, and higher education. Uh, so we have centers across the state, <coughs> excuse me, uh, usually associated at a college or university. Uh, so we want to tap into those resources as well, too. So we have centers you can go to and uh, make an appointment with and talk to them. Guess Utah Small Business Development Centers. And there, if you look in the in the in the guide, they're on. I can't remember which page, but it's under the counseling section. And it just so happens Salt Lake Community College houses the Salt Lake Small Business Development Center out at the uh, uh, Miller campus. There's the SBDC office is located out there. All of their counseling is free. You can go meet with the counselor. Say, I want to start a business in this area. I need some help. Again, you can ask questions. They have uh, business plan formats, uh, 
They have all of the, the uh, resources at the university to help you so you can put together a good, well thought out research business plan. Okay? They can also help you package your SBA loan and they can hand walk you to the lender of your choice. Introduce you to that lender, help you get that relationship started, help you get the money you need to start and grow your business. And then of course when you need, uh, you want to go to one of these export missions, then they can help with that as well too. So you have, the, you have SCORE, you have the Utah Small Business Development Center. Thirdly, we have what's called the Women's Business Center, okay, which is co-located at the Salt Lake Area Chamber of Commerce. It's a center there who specializes in helping women-owned businesses. Now, the neat part is, since they get federal money, they can't discriminate, so they help men, too. So anybody can go there, uh, men or women. But women in currently in Utah star are starting businesses at the rate of about uh, two to one over men. They're starting businesses faster and uh, have some unique problems, which is why we have the Women's Business Center to help through that. So I've just given you three resources that can help you with business plan, questions, information, mentors, everything you need to put that business plan together. So it makes sense to you, it'll make sense to a banker. You can get the financing you need, you can be successful. Because we don't want you to fail. Our job is, is to make you successful. When we guarantee a loan, it, it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, we, just, we just sign a piece of paper that tells the bank we guaranteed the deal. And if a loan never goes bad, we never have to exchange any money. Okay, so as taxpayers, that should make you very happy so that we don't have to use any of your tax dollars to pay on these uh, guarantees if the loan goes bad. In fact, that prompts me another question. Uh, what, what loss rate do you think we should, would see on our SBA loans? Now, we already said the majority of them aren't going to be around in five years. They don't have lots of collateral. They need government guarantees to get loans. So what's the, what do you think the, the expected loss rate would be on, on our SBA loans? 25%, okay. Are you okay with that as a taxpayer? <laughs> most taxpayers aren't. In fact, uh, if you're a taxpayer, most of them, when we say what's an acceptable loss rate, they say zero. We don't want to have, have any tax dollars go to cover that. Why should we ha cover somebody else's entrepreneurial, you know, shot? Of course, they're going to create jobs and pay taxes, and the, so there's, there is some reason for, for some of that. But actually, in, in Utah, our portfolio, we typically range about, uh, about a 97% a success rate. So 2 to 4% is an average loss rate on our loan portfolio. That's pretty darn good, given the situation, the market that we're dealing with. So why do you think SBA is so successful with its loan programs in a market where lenders won't even make any loans? Well, it comes down to how we structure the deal. When you borrow money from a lender, do they want to give you a long time to pay back the money or a short time to pay back the money? Why a short time? Because they're worried about getting the money back. So the shorter the period, the faster they get the money back, the, they're less of a risk. This is what they perceive. But when you shorten up the maturity of the loan, what happens to the monthly debt service? That goes up high, right? Because you've got a shorter period to pay it back, so you've got high monthly debt payments. And what does that do to your cash flow in a small business? That zaps your cash flow. And that's your lifeblood. That's your success line is how much cash flow do you have? Can I make payroll on Friday? Do I have enough cash to do that? So you have another tough situation. Even if you can get access to the money on a conventional basis, they're probably going to cram you into a tight payback schedule. It's going to make it very difficult for you to be successful and survive long enough to pay back that loan. When the SBA steps in, some magic happens. Uh, what we do is we allow that lender to stretch out that maturity because of the SBA guarantee. For example, if you want to borrow money to, buy, to uh, build commercial real estate, typically in the state, you might get 10 to 15 years to pay back that loan on a conventional basis. If it's an SBA loan situation, you can get up to 25 years to pay back that loan. Okay? That's going to stretch out that maturity lower that monthly debt service, and increase your cash flow, okay? <coughs> the same is true for working capital. If you need money to pay the rent and pay the utilities and do some things, uh, how long do you think a commercial bank will give you 
to pay back that type of a loan? Short-term money, any idea? Actually, you're lucky if you get one year to pay it back. Sometimes they want it in 180 days, okay? <coughs> well, again, shorter payback, tough to, to make those payments. With an SBA guarantee, you can get up to 10 years to pay back those loans. Better cash flow, you're going to survive. That's why we have a low loss rate. And that's a magic we do in, in the government sector that the private sector isn't willing to, to take that risk on, okay? So, we're getting you access to money that you otherwise couldn't get or couldn't qualify for. And like I mentioned, in Utah, 408 million bucks was on the street because of SBA guarantees. Yes? So, are you saying that the SBA <coughs> guarantees have only been in existence for longer? Is that what you're saying? Yes. They're willing to go longer maturity. Why? Because the federal government is promising to pay back the guaranteed portion if you don't. It's just like we're co-signed on the deal. Okay, if, if you don't pay back the loan, they're going to come to us and say, okay, SBA, borrowed and pay me, you owe me 85% of the deal. We write them a check. And that's where I said, if loan works as agreed and why we want you to be successful, we don't have to write that check. Okay? And the fact of the matter, yes, question. What we do is we put maximum on what the bank can allow, okay. and then it's up to you and the bank to negotiate under those maximums. Okay. But uh, so we're, we're giving you access to this money that you didn't uh, otherwise have access to to start and grow your business. In fact, almost every business that starts up in the country starts off with an SBA loan. Okay. All right, we talk about money, and we've talked about the business plan. What else should we talk about? What else can the federal government help with? Anybody know how much the federal government spends each year in buying products and services? <laughs> this is one of those big numbers. Okay. Actually, every year the government spends close to half a trillion dollars in buying goods and services. And they are, in fact, the largest customer in the United States is the federal government. Okay. Were you aware there is a federal law that says the federal government has to buy 23% of those goods and services from small businesses? Well, you can do the math. 23% of half a trillion is the potential market then that small businesses have to sell their goods and services to the federal government. Is that hard to do? It's a different process, and there's forms, of course. It's the government, but it's just like anything else. If you learn how to do it, you can sell to the federal government. Any idea what Hill Air Force Base spent last year? Their local federal institution up north? Uh, probably a couple billion dollars. And what did they buy? They bought everything from toilet paper to aircraft, okay? So if there's a market here for your product or service, there's probably a market with the federal government. You need to learn how to sell to the federal government, okay? And in fact, the federal government has what they call special set-aside programs where they take some of these contracts, and if they can find small businesses that can bid on these contracts, they can do what's called set them aside so only small business can bid on them. Large business is prohibited for bidding on these contracts. Small business is the only ones that can bid on them, okay? And in fact, they actually have some programs, some specialized set-aside programs, where not only is it uh, limited to small business, but in many cases, they're what's called sole source contract. They're, they're given out non-competitively, okay? And SBA actually has one of these programs. It's called the 8A program. It's for socially and economically disadvantaged firms and individuals. Uh, it's typically referred to as a minority program, but you don't have to be a minority. You just have to be socially and economically disadvantaged. And we could, if you're interested, you can come to our orientation meeting to learn about that program. Uh, but we, we do annually in the state of Utah about $250 million in the 8A program on sole source contracts to small businesses they get from the federal government. That's pretty cool. That's going to help you start and grow and diversify your business. Okay. 
But guess what happens? Let's say you bid on a contract and you win it. Uh, then what do you usually need to perform on that contract? You, well, you need money. Okay, you need money to perform on that contract. You win a contract, you're going to need to hire people, buy equipment, do things. And when you run down to your local banker and say, Mr. Banker, I just got a million dollar government contract. I need half a million dollars in working capital to perform on it. Are they happy to just write you a check for that money? No, so we're back to the same situation in any uh, small business situation. They're going to say, what collateral do you have? You know, all of the standard questions. Well, SBA has a loan guarantee program where you can get government uh, uh, you know, a government guaranteed loan to perform on those contracts. That's real too. Okay. So we help you with access to capital. We help you with business planning and consulting. We can help you with government contracts. What else can we help you with? Uh, let's say you have, you're, you're setting up and, and, and you learn about some crazy federal regulation that relates to your business or industry. And it just doesn't make sense. What can you do? Is there anything you can do? Well, one of the things you could do is you could probably call up your congressman or senator and cry to them, hey, I, this is crummy regulation that's hurting my ability to do business. Can you fix that? What are they going to tell you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, we'll get right on that, and we'll, we'll, we'll help you change that law, right? Or you could go to Washington and, and, and get on a plane and go ask somebody, hey, this is a bad regulation. You could sue the federal government. You could try anything to change this, these rules and regulations. Or you could come to the SBA because we have a national ombudsman that allows small business to file complaints with us and then we try to get new legislation to change those rules. Is that cool? Yeah. We're out there working for you to help uh, do away with onerous and bad federal regulations that will affect your ability to start or grow your business. So access to capitals, business plans, federal contracts, regulatory issues. We already talked about exporting. We can't emphasize that enough. We love to talk about that. In fact, I want to sum up real quick because I know we don't have tons of time. But uh, I want to tell you a story. It's a true story. This was a guy who was a track star. Went up through high school and college, loved to run track. <coughs> and uh, got married, but every weekend he was at a track meet. Everybody, you know, some people liked that, some didn't, but he loved running. And he had buddies that run, and finally his wife got fed up with him being gone every weekend to the track meet. The garage was a mess, and she said, okay, you're skipping the track meet this week. You're going to stay home. You're going to clean out the garage. So as a good husband, he said, yes, dear. And he, Saturday rolled around. He backed the car out, took the stuff out of the garage, hosed it down, was cleaning up. And as he was putting things away, uh, one of the things he found was an old waffle iron. Didn't know if it worked, so he plugged it in and said, I'll let that heat up for a few minutes. Uh, he also found some old tires from about three cars ago that were old and wrong size and cracked and really weren't useful to put on a car. But he saw that waffle iron starting to heat up and smoke a little, and he looked at those tires, and he got an idea. And he went and grabbed a pair of tin snips, and he cut a hunk of that tire off, and he slapped it in that waffle iron and melted it down. Of course, he opened it up, and it had bumps on it like a waffle does, but it was flexible and, fly, you know, uh, fle flexible and pliable. And uh, got an idea, since he's a track guy, likes to run, he cut it out in the shape of a shoe sole, and he glued it to his tennis shoe. Got down, he could start faster, turn quicker, accelerate faster, was excited about his ability then to manufacture athletic shoes to compete in his track meets. So the next week, he made him up some new shoes, Lo and behold, won the track meet, all right? Everybody's like, wow, what's your secret? You're performing so much better. It's my shoes, special shoes. I make my shoes. What did they say? Make me a pair. Sell me a pair. I want to do better. They're, these were people that like to perform, all right? So the business idea went off. I should start a business making athletic shoes. There's a demand for it. People are saying it's a great product. All right, now I want you to put your banker hat on in the story. And so what does this guy need? He does a quick little business plan. He figures he needs about $50,000 to start his business. Runs down to his local banker. And Mr. Banker, I need $50,000 to start my business. And the banker says, well, great. Tell me about what you do. 
He says, well, I, meant, I melt tires in my waffle iron in my garage, and I cut them out, and I glue them to tennis shoes. Okay, if you're the banker in the story, how many of you are going to make this guy a loan? Why not? We just said small business is so important, and they create jobs and pay taxes, and you all want to be small businesses, and yet you won't make the guy a loan when you're the banker. Why? Because you're worried about if he really can do what he says he can do. Is he crazy? Is it for real? Do you know which business I'm talking about? Nike, Nike Shoes. Okay, got started with an SBA guaranteed loan in Beaverton, Oregon. <coughs> Initially, everybody thought they were nuts. Who would pay these high prices for tennis shoes, running shoes, right? We all know what's happened since then, okay? And every small business is very similar. Your story will be something similar. You're going to have a vision that other people don't see. You're going to see a, a way to fill a niche market or to fill a need that's out there. And to you, it makes perfectly sense. And you're going to have a vision of what it is you want to do. The trouble is convincing everybody else along the way that it's a good solution to the problem. But what we're here to say is we're there to help you. That's what SBA exists for. We want you to be successful. We want you to start your businesses. We have these different programs to make it available for you. There's no reason you can't go be the next Nike shoes. Okay? All right. That's a lot in a nutshell. I give you the, the, the resource guides for you to look at. And now let's open it up to some questions. That's the best part. What questions do you have? Reggie. Okay, well, what you have to first decide, does the government buy what product or service you're selling? Okay, and there, is, uh, there are databases out there where you can go online and you can find everything that the government bought in prior years. So you could see if, if it related to your product or service. If, if, the, if, the, if they have bought it, chances are they will buy it again. And it's just a matter of finding out which federal agency uh, bought that and how do you contact them. In fact, uh, what we do is on the last Tuesday of every month, we do an orientation on federal procurement. We held it at the SBA offices in downtown. It's free. If you're interested, I would say make, an, uh, make an arrangements to come. There's no charge. Which is the day? Pardon me? That's not in the book because uh, this is something that you just have to find out locally. The last Tuesday of every month is a procurement uh, orientation. So if you're interested in any federal procurement programs, make arrangements to come to that. Yes, sir. Uh, we don't have we don't have any. A lot of college universities have study abroad pro programs for you to do that. Right, but what we do have is the chance to visit foreign countries through trade shows and trade missions, so that you can learn how to do business in those areas and uh, find customers in those areas. Yes, sir. Does Utah have any hub zones? Utah does have hub zones. Does anybody know what a hub zone is? Hub zone is a procurement program and it stands for historically underutilized business zones. Okay? These are areas, geographical areas, where there hasn't been a lot of federal contracts been awarded. So guess where those places are? Where do you think the least amount of federal government contracting takes place in the state of Utah? In the rural, in the rural areas. So most of the rural areas are hub zones. If, if you happen to have a business that's located in a hub zone and 35% of your workforce lives in a hub zone, you can get hub zone set-aside contracts. It's one of those set-aside programs we talked about. Yes. If you're a veteran, if you're a woman, if you're a minority, if you're a small business, if you're a hub zone, the more buckets they can check off, the happier they are to give you the contract. So if I were to partner with, we'll say, like my mom, would that qualify for loan veteran? Not, not necessarily because the, the qualifying entity has to own the majority of the business. So if you're going for your mom to be women-owned, she has to own 51% of the business. And if you're a veteran... Now, you don't have the majority ownership anymore, so you wouldn't qualify for a veteran, but you would qualify for women. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Where would you get the best place to go on your website? 
The best place to find a mentor, I would start with the, the, men, the program engineer called SCORE. In fact, uh, I would say go to their website, www.score.org, and look up Utah. You can see, I think they have profiles on all of the SCORE counselors. So you can find somebody that best fits your needs and then make an appointment to meet with them or be counseled via email at no charge and they can become a mentor. Okay? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. That, that's a very common problem. And what you can do, you can make, you require anybody that reviews your data to sign a, a non disclosure agreement or confidentiality agreement so that you are protected. So you can still share it with a mentor or a counseling group and get their feedback but they can't ever, you know, steal it or, or, or share it. And if they do, then you can sue them because of the non-disclosure and confidentiality agreement. That's what, what most people do. But if it's so secretive that you don't want to share it with anybody, then you have to take the risk of doing it on your own. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Well, what I'm saying is unique about women-owned businesses, especially in a state like Utah. Utah is a very old conservative state, and a lot of people still think the women's place is in the home. They shouldn't be in business. And then when you go to borrow money uh, at, a, at, a, at a bank or a credit union, uh, you're probably not going to see too many women loan officers. You're going to see men. And so there might be some discrimination issues that come against. You've probably heard of the glass ceiling that women-owned businesses have to deal with. Uh, of course, the pay is not equal between men and women. So those are the, some of the unique circumstances that I say women run into and they need some special help and that's the beauty of the Women's Business Center. They can help you overcome those problems because the, counsel the counselors are women and people, you know, they deal with women-owned businesses and they can uh, teach you how to overcome those unique circumstances and those problems. Yes? You said it was as high as a 2 to 4 percent loss rate? Yes. It's a little better than the national averages. Uh, the, the, the medium loss rate nationwide is about 5 to 6%. Uh, the, the worst ones are around 7 to 8%. But Utah is pretty good between 2 and 4%. And since that's where we're all located, uh, that's all you really need to worry about here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I can. Personally, I mean, I've been with the SBA close to 30 years now, and I've seen a lot of businesses come and go. I've looked at thousands of business plans. And to me, the real key to success is in doing your homework. The reason we say a business plan is so important is that before you risk the money, before you invest the kids' college funds, before you mortgage the house, you want a business plan that truly makes sense to you and everybody else. So if you, you, the, the neat part is you can do that up front. You can do pro forma analysis. You can do feasibility studies. You can see if it's going to make sense to do that business before you risk it. What happens is more often than not, a lot of small businesses stumble across an opportunity. And they think, wow, there's a huge market there. And they rush in. They mortgage the home. They take their savings. They get the rich uncle to throw something in. And they jump into a, a marketplace because they think there's the market there. In many cases, um, there is. I'm not saying there's not. But they haven't really done any homework. They haven't really developed a plan for what their strategy is going to be. And so they get going, and then what typically happens is they run out of money real fast, and they still need to grow the business. But they didn't know they were going to need that much money to keep that business going. And they've, they, so they typically use all their borrowing power initially, and six months down the road, now they need more money, and they can't borrow anymore. So now their cash flow dries up, they can't make payrolls, they end up filing bankruptcy. And in Utah, we have one of the highest bankruptcy states uh, in, in the country because people don't do their homework up front. They're more reactive than proactive. So to me, the key for success is having that business plan and not just doing it one time. You just don't do it once and file it away. It's an ongoing, living, breathing, dynamic document. 
you've got to update that all the time and see, okay, what are my projections for next year? Can I meet those? What am I going to need to meet them? You know, how much money am I going to make? Does it make sense to do it? If you will do that on a continual basis and evaluate your business as you grow it, chances are you will be successful. Uh, yeah, uh, and ongoing. I mean, updated quarterly or what, you know, ha depending how often you need it. But you need to have a, you need to have a, I mean, when you want to go on a trip, what do you need? You need a map. You need to know to go from point A to point B. Your business plan is your business roadmap. You need to know how you're going to get from here to there, what you're going to need to do that. Am I going to need to borrow money? What kind of resources am I needed? Do I need to hire staff? What are all the resources that I need to be successful? Guess we're out of time. <laughs> we are out of time. Can we thank Ariel and Bartley and, and uh, Steve Price with another big hand? Is that good? You know, in answer to your question, uh, as far as, and Steve is totally right, because the world changes every day. And uh, you need to uh, be aware of what's going on. And that's what, um, that's what keeping that business plan current, because that can change direction. Bartley may have to change direction in his new business at some point, because they may run out of houses in Peru, and he's got to figure out where to put the next ones. And... Um, those kind of things are what uh, are what makes you uh, what makes you successful. We have a an incredibly low loss rate in the uh, state of Utah for SBA uh, compared uh, and compared to normal business, uh, ninety percent loss rate, and um, so uh, and and those uh, and those are are those assets both from the state and from the. Uh, federal government are here to help you succeed. So uh, <clears throat> just as a final, if you would turn in your, uh, the, the, uh, on your syllabus, that uh, signature, that uh, page, that